Hey, this is a pretty cool channel. But who is that guy anyway? No, not that guy. That guy. Well, I'm glad you asked. That charming guy right there is the one and only Dick Miller, one of the greatest and most prolific character actors of all time. More specifically, that's Dick Miller in the film A Bucket of Blood from the year 1959. In case it's not obvious, I like this movie a lot, and today I'm gonna talk about it. Man, this place is beginning to feel like a lineup. Yeah, baby. If it don't cool out pretty soon, I'm gonna haunt somebody else's joint. We may have to start drinking. A Bucket of Blood is a satirical comedy horror directed by Roger Corman, another of the most prolific figures in movie history with a career spanning nearly 70 years. It was produced on a $50,000 budget, a little over $500,000 in today's money, and was shot in a mere five days. Starring Dick Miller, a longtime collaborator of Roger Corman's, A Bucket of Blood went on to make around $180,000, which is almost $2 million today, and was met with mostly good reviews. The film follows Walter Paisley, an awkward, socially inept, wow, he's literally me, busboy who works at the Yellow Door Cafe, a frequent haunt for local beatniks and artists. One night, Walter attempts to create a sculpture of Carla, the hostess at the cafe, when he is interrupted by his landlord's cat, who has somehow managed to get stuck in the wall of his apartment. Walter, the absolute genius he is, attempts to get the cat out using a knife, but accidentally kills it. Rather than dispose of the body or do anything else even slightly reasonable in this situation, Walter decides to cover the body with the clay from his sculpture, leaving the knife inside. The next day, Walter shows his sculpture to Carla, who is impressed by his work and convinces the owner of the cafe, Leonard, to put it on display. That would be silly. It's tremendous. Look at the detail. The anatomy is perfect. Look at the expression on its face. Walter is met with much praise for his sculpture, affectionately titled Dead Cat, with one of them giving Walter a vial of heroin to remember her by. I want to give you something. Something that'll make you remember me. Walter is followed by a police officer to his home, who attempts to arrest him for possession of narcotics. Walter panics and believes the officer is going to shoot him, so he kills him with a frying pan. No! Don't shoot Walter, me! Walter, just relax! No, you're gonna shoot no, me! Just relax! No, don't shoot just me! Shut up, Walter! No, you're gonna shoot me! Don't shoot! Naturally. Meanwhile, Leonard discovers the truth behind the dead cat sculpture. When Walter next comes to the cafe, he announces to the beatniks that his newest piece is accurately called Murdered Man, and he brings Leonard and Carla to his apartment to see it. They are both amazed yet repulsed by the sculpture, with Carla saying it deserves its own exhibition at the cafe. Leonard, realizing how much money he could make off of what he knows is a dead body, agrees. Yes. That's the idea. Maybe when it's big enough, we can have a show. A show? Yeah. Uh, just for me? No! Well, not exactly. I mean, you, you take years and years. It's getting hot again. The next day, the entirety of the Yellow Door Cafe is up in arms over Walter's newest sculpture, except for Alice, a model who isn't very popular among the other beatniks. Maxwell! yoo -hoo. Through the table, bring a bowl. I may be sick. It's Alice the Awful. Comes to spread cheer and the color. Harsh. Walter, once again proving his level-headedness, follows her home and says he'd like to pay her to model for him. After she strips nude and poses for him, he strangles her with her scarf and molds her in clay. This sculpture is received with such wild praise by the beatniks of the cafe that a party is thrown in Walter's honor. After the party, Walter drunkenly stumbles back to his apartment, passing a factory worker who he, in another show of extreme rationality, proceeds to decapitate. He molds the head into a new sculpture and shows it to Leonard, who realizes he needs to put a stop to Walter's rampage. Leonard puts all of the sculptures into an exhibit at the cafe where Walter proposes to Carla only to be turned down. However, when he offers to sculpt her, she excitedly agrees. Would you let me make a statue of you? Would you really like to? That'd make me very happy. When Carla returns to the exhibit, she finds that the clay has come off of Alice's finger. She tells Walter that there are bodies in the sculpture, and he responds by saying that he made them immortal and that he can make her immortal too. Don't you see, Carla? I made them immortal. Don't you see? I can do the same for you. Carla flees and Walter chases after her, with the other beatniks also discovering the truth and following. Walter chases Carla to a lumber yard where he is haunted by the voices of the police officer and Alice, causing him to return home. Walter. No. He couldn't know. He's dead. Knowing he's about to be found out, he decides to hide. Where they'll never find me. Carla, Leonard, the other beatniks, and the police break down Walter's door only to find that he has hanged himself. 
The film ends with this one-liner. Suppose he would have called it Hanging Man. His greatest work. Now that it's over, we can get to the real meat and potatoes. What makes this movie so great? Okay, okay, okay. I'll get the boring stuff out of the way first. This is a B-movie. Not that kind of B-movie. Now, when most people hear the term B-movie, they think of movies written, produced, and directed with the intent of being bad. Things like Eight-Legged Freaks or <laughs> Samurai Cop, which I own, by the way. What does katana mean? It means Japanese sword. But B-movies aren't always just purposefully bad tax write-offs. The term more broadly applies to movies that were made with notably lower budgets or without the influence of a major studio. A Bucket of Blood is one of these movies. Roger Corman is no stranger to B-movie production, with over 385 of them having his name on them. And neither was Dick Miller, who had appeared in over 70, many of which as collaborations with Roger Corman. I think their prior experience with this style of filmmaking really shines through in A Bucket of Blood. There's definitely a skill to world building on this level with such a small budget. The best B-movies are not limited by the fact that they're B-movies. They don't try to do more than they can afford, and they work within their budget to make the most of it. A Bucket of Blood does this masterfully. While the film has a low budget and definitely feels low budget, it doesn't feel cheap. None of the actors are phoning in their performance, the sets are well made, and the world, while constrained to just a few locations, doesn't feel limited or small. Rather than feeling cheap, it's made clear that every dollar of the movie's budget was spent sparingly and thoughtfully to get the absolute most out of it that they can. Interestingly though, Dick Miller himself said that he wishes A Bucket of Blood had a higher production value, and there are a few moments where I'm inclined to agree, especially on the ending shot where Walter's face is just speckled with plaster rather than being completely coated. It would have been a lot more effective if there was enough clay on his face to really make it look like he tried to turn himself into a sculpture, but I digress. Of particular note, in my opinion, are the score and cinematography. They work in tandem to portray a very cynical, morose atmosphere bordering on film noir. This was definitely done on purpose, as the entire film revolves around a very specific portrayal of the art world, which brings me to my next point. Alright, this is it. The part of the video that you clicked for. The part of the review where I ramble incoherently about the... <coughs> deeper meanings in this movie. Before I can do any of that though, we need to talk about the context and intent of the movie. A Bucket of Blood was made near the end of the 50s, right in the middle of a massive underground cultural movement of artistic self-expression, intellectualism, and non-conformity called the Beat Generation. In other words, these people were the first hipsters. One of the main goals of this movie was to satirize and poke fun at some of the stereotypes of the Beat Generation, with most of the characters being uptight, pseudo-intellectual, and even pretentious. Just look at the opening scene. What is he even saying? Ride on the omnibus of art. Burn gas buggies and whip your sour cream of circumstance. And hope. And go ahead and sleep your bloody heads off. It was this monologue that inspired Walter to go home and try his own hand at art. So if you really think about it, it was art's fault that got all these people murdered. Specifically, it was this guy's fault. All of these murders were committed in the name of art, turned into art because of art. Death itself is art. Perhaps art itself is death. Rather, art itself is dead. By gold. A Bucket of Blood features death and art as two different but intrinsically linked concepts. Not only does this serve as the fun pastiche of the idea of beatniks falling in love with art without bothering to further question what it really is or how it came to be just because it's edgy and new, but it provides unflinching commentary on the superficiality of some parts of the art world. Walter, desperately wanting to be known and respected for creating art, is more willing to kill rather than set out to hone his own skill. But the blame can't be completely placed on him. Killing the cat was an accident, sure, but after the dead cat sculpture gets such a positive response, he realizes he's found an easy alternative to breaking into the art world. Not only does he go from accidental kills to all-out murder, but he desecrates the bodies of his victims and he's celebrated for it, forming a causality loop where as he becomes more and more renowned, he becomes more and more willing to kill. This moment right here, where the cafe-goers celebrate his work, that was the moment Walter became Heisenberg. The point of everything I just said is that this is a good movie. Probably like a 9 out of 10. Four and a half stars on letterbox.com. 
If you want to watch the full thing, I'll leave a link to where you can watch it on YouTube in the description. More videos, more streams, more everything soon. Also, you should join my Discord because it's cool. Also, thanks for 1,000 subscribers. That's pretty neat. The brother man bill put the terrible term at the top of the bill. Da, 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 da. Brother man bill, brother man bill, brother man bill. Da, 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 da. The brother man.